So Google has announced a new processor, the Google Axion. Now it's not a smartphone processor like the Google Tensor, not a laptop processor, it's a processor for the server, for the cloud. And Google has designed it itself using an ARM CPU core design. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So over the last few years, there has been quite a shift over towards using ARM in the server center, in data centers, rather than just using x86, which of course is still very, very popular. However, it's now not the only type of CPU architecture in the cloud. Now, the reason for that are twofold. One is because of power efficiency. Now, ARM, of course, is known for its power efficiency. That's why we all use ARM processors in our smartphones, we're running from a battery and so even iPhones, Android phones, all ARM based. Now that technology translates up into the cloud. Of course it's not running in the same thermal envelope, you're not talking about two, three watts, you're talking about much bigger processors. However that fundamental idea of power efficiency comes along the way and of course when you're dealing with a data center that has thousands of servers, every saving on one server is multiplied by thousands because you're replicating that in every server that you use this technology. And the other reason why it's becoming popular is because it's a different business model. ARM uses a different business model than uh, Intel and AMD. From Intel and AMD, you buy the chips from Intel or AMD or a server from a company that sells them and they've bought the chips from Intel or AMD. But with ARM, you buy the design for the chip and then you go ahead and design your own chip. And that's what Google has done with the uh, Axion. So it's got its own chip that's got uh, ARM CPU cores. It's put all the other stuff you need around that chip to make it uh, work for the data center. And uh, it's called the Google Action, and it's actually working today. Google are already using it internally. In fact, YouTube ads are now served from uh, ARM processors, ARM-based processors using the Google Axion. Now what's interesting, that means that the total cost of ownership, so starting with the fact you need a design team, some engineers to design this processor, the manufacturing, the software, running it for several years in the data center, the energy cost, the maintenance cost, all of that must be cheaper than if you buy something off the shelf using an AMD or an Intel chip. So that's why Google are doing it. And not only Google, Google in fact is quite late to the game in this area. Amazon have been using uh, ARM-based CPUs that it's designed itself, processes it's designed itself using ARM-based CPUs for years now. In fact, it's the Graviton processor, it's now Graviton 4. So it's the fourth generation of what Amazon are using. Microsoft have done this, the Microsoft Cobalt 100 is, is, is a very similar idea for their cloud offerings. Uh, Nvidia, of course, have been using ARM uh, CPUs for many, many, many years. And the Gray Superchip, for example, is ARM based. So actually Google are quite late to the game in catching up with this, but they are doing it now as well. And so they now have their own processor using the ARM CPU. So what is the ARM CPU? Well, in this case, it is the Neoverse V2. So Neoverse rather than Cortex, Cortex A, Cortex X is what you find in smartphones. Neoverse is ARM's server designed uh, CPUs. This is the Neoverse V2, which is designed for high single threaded performance. And it's a 64 bit, of course, ARM V9. And it can be put into processors with many, many cores, not just four cores or eight cores that like you might have in a smartphone or on your desktop, we're talking 64 cores, 128 cores, even up to 256 cores. Now, Google hasn't announced what the exact configuration is, but it's going to be at least 64 cores, probably 128 cores. We'll see when more information comes out. Now, Google are claiming these are Google's numbers, haven't yet been verified, that it's 30% faster, this Axion chip, than other ARM-based are offerings that are generally available. No details in what they mean by that compared to who, but they're saying their chip is offering them a 30% performance boost, and in fact a 50% performance boost over comparable Intel or AMD generations of, of CPU. Again, these are Google's numbers, uh, and they haven't released any details about that, but that's what they're claiming. That's their business reason, one of their business reasons for going down this path. So when we'll be able to use it, well, you won't be able to get down to your local Best Buy and pick one up, that's for sure. This is something that Google manufactures for using inside of Google's data centers. However, it's already using it internally. And of course it wants to make publicly available so you can buy 
virtual machines, rent virtual machines, cloud instances using ARM-based uh, CPUs. They're going to be previewing in the next couple of months, and I anticipate full rollout for general public usage uh, sometime this year. Okay, so they have it, the Google Action, so another chip to go next to all the other ARM-based server chips, Graviton, as I said, Gray Super Chip, Cobalt from Microsoft. Uh, what do you think about that? Is this the kind of the prime time for, for uh, ARM in the data center? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Spence. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.